Hey, I'm Dr. Gillis. Uh, this is a little talk about the history of a very controversial uh, discussion that kind of really kind of, you have one side, CNN, who says clinical trials are really important, which is absolutely true, and then you have the other side, anecdotal reports and other research done around the world is important. And what I'm gonna do is try to bring everybody to the middle, because I think there's too much rhetoric on each side, and really we need to benefit the American people. So one of the things I have done is I've looked at the drug that has become very controversial, which is the hydroxychloroquine, or chloroquine, uh, was the first prodrug. So the way drugs develop, they're usually derived from some type of plant, and then we figure out the structure, the chemical structure of that plant, and then we produce it as a medication, and that's, that's, that's the drug that becomes before it. And then after that, we can figure out a way to make it even work better with clinical trials, and then that's the next drug that comes. So when you think of hydroxychloroquine, it originally started from a plant of the tree bark called chincona, chincona bark, okay? So it went from chincona bark to quinine, from quinine to chloroquine, from chloroquine to hydroxychloroquine, okay? And think about it as generations. You can have penicillin, ampicillin, as the cillins get get more invested, uh, they become more powerful and maybe do a better job, okay? So I'm just leaving that, I don't know if that's a good example, that's the example I'm gonna give. So let's go over this a little bit. Chincona bark was in Peru. So when Spain was exploring South America, they came across uh, a group of Indians that seemed to be recalcitrant to this intermittent fever. And you gotta remember back in those days, they didn't know what malaria was, they didn't really know anything, but they realized that these Indians, if they drank this particular tree bark that was made out of this uh, chincona tree that they were resistant to these fevers. And malaria is a disease that can kind of come back because you got to remember malaria isn't a virus and it's not a bacteria, it's a parasite, okay? And it's a parasite that infects red blood cells and inhibits their ability to carry oxygen. And it can attack certain organs, particularly the, the most vulnerable organs are the heart and the lungs and the liver, and a, as well as the spleen too. So. Anyway, the, they went to Spain, the Spaniards brought it back, and the, the reason it got its name, Chincona, isn't really because of Peru, it's because the Countess of Chincona had a intermittent fever, and the, they gave her this tree bark tea, and she got cured. So what happened was, is the next thing that happened is the Jesuits found out about this, and the Jesuits, you remember, they were kind of sent to South America too to apostolize everybody to become the new religion, right? And so the Jesu Jesuits saw the power within this bark, and they had it as a secret medicine. And they, they uh, commanded a, uh, lots of money for it, and then they gave it to the poor as well. And they distributed any time there was an outbreak of an intermittent fever, whether it be malaria or any fever, bacterial or uh, viral, uh, from the information I've got from this historic test that I've read, is this was one of their go-to substances. Maybe like we might go to Tylenol whenever anybody has a fever, right? So it became so powerful of a substance for the fever, it became known as the powder of the Cardinal Father. Powder of the Cardinal Father. And the church controlled this very powerful medicine. And then in 1672, another doctor wrote a book called Pyrie, which means fever, Talgia, you know, I ache with heat, pyro, fire, I ache with, I ache with fire. And they gave it for a goose. A goose is intermittent fevers, which is cl classically described as malaria, but they didn't know what malaria was. In certain portions of the world where this worked, malaria wasn't a great big problem like it was in South America. So this brings us back to uh, Chicona, Chico and then remember we go to Quino, uh, uh, quinine, chloroquine, hydrochloroquine. They're kind of a mouthful of words. Now the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do another video because I gotta have more space, but I want to describe what happens to when you have an inflammatory event and whether that inflammatory event occurs because of a virus, because of a bacterial infection, or because of a parasite. There may be some mechanisms that may explain why a physician or a scientist would think that this particular medication might work in somebody that has a really high fever. And one of the hallmarks of this disease is the danger of the inflammatory cytokine storm caused by the inflammatory event that the virus is causing. So my next video, will, will, I'm gonna discuss the science 
it's pretty heavy science and it's even heavy for me because I'm really a proctologist, but I'm going to try to bring you the bottom line. All right.